All right. Okay, so hello and welcome everybody. This is Lisa, Job Coach Germany. And as you can see, I'm not here on my own today. I have the huge pleasure to interview Sean, who has his own podcast. It's called The Germany Experience. And maybe some of you people have already heard of Sean and heard and listened to some of his episodes because they are actually very valuable. And he includes a lot of information for everybody that is interested in moving to Germany or living as an expat in Germany. So hello and welcome, Sean. Thank you so much, Lisa, and thank you for inviting me. The pleasure is all mine, actually. Oh, I'm glad that you're here. Thank you so much. So, well, what are we going to do? Well, basically, I'm going to ask Sean a couple of questions of his journey, how he came to Germany, and maybe he can provide us with some tips and tricks on how he found his current job or maybe any other job that he's had before as well. And if you people have any questions, you can ask us here on Facebook. All right, so my first question, Sean, would be what actually motivated you to come to Germany? Yeah, so I am from South Africa originally, and uh, the, our motivation was my wife and I, then we, then we weren't married at the time, but we traveled twice to Europe just, just on vacations, and we'd, we'd spent a, little, a bit of time in Europe, and we, were just, we just fell in love with uh, everything here. It's like we went to Switzerland, Italy, uh, all kinds of places, not Germany, funny enough. And uh, we were looking for opportunities to travel through Europe. And then my wife uh, got an opportunity through her job to move to Germany. And uh, it was a bit tricky because I'd never been to Germany before. My wife had, but I'd never stepped foot in uh, Germany. And my wife just said to me, um, it, it, we've been to Zurich. And if you like Zurich, you're probably going to like Germany. So I was like, okay, let's move there. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> Perfect. And then we moved. Um, the other reason for moving um, was because also in South Africa at the time, we were already thinking of starting a family. And South Africa, we were questioning, especially in Johannesburg, where we were living, uh, we were questioning, like, is this a, the right place to raise a family? Um, is this where we want to settle down? And Johannesburg is great. It's it's sort of a big financial hub of uh, South Africa, but it's it's also a lot of crime and it, it's it's a big city big city life and everything so we just decided well let's see what things are like in europe and germany and here we are oh wow what a great story so this is sometimes how life plays us right yes. so there yes, pops up an opportunity and you just grab it that's yeah. wonderful and did you and your wife know any German before you came to Germany? <laughs> no, we, we found out about, I think about six months before that we would be moving to Germany. And then we did an A1 course at Goethe Institute, which is oh. really just, Guten Tag, wie geht es Ihnen? Schau mal hier das Doppelbett. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like oh. really the basic, basic stuff that you get in A1. And at the time we thought that should be good enough to move here. And we were feeling pretty confident. And of course, you get, when you get here, you realize that what they teach you in A1 is useful as a, a, a Grundlage, as a basis, mm -hmm. but it quickly becomes not enough when you move to Germany. So um, yeah, that, that, that our, our Germany, our German was not good when we came here. Okay. So, okay. But that's very interesting to hear because normally people also, I, I mean, I've met also people that have been living in Germany and have never even taken any course or don't speak German at all, even though they are living here uh, for 10 years or so. Yeah. So I, th I think it depends what you want from your Germany experience. And it, it, it's, it, you know, you can, uh, you can do it. I think of places like Berlin and Munich, you can actually get by. There's a lot of foreigners there. There is a lot of uh, English companies. You could actually get by with a minimum of German. Mm -hmm. But for us, it was a case of if we're going to do this, we want to experience as much of the culture as possible. We, we don't want to just live here. We want to be a part of uh, Germany. So that's, that's why we did the... Yeah. Uh, that's what I also recommend everybody when they are yeah. thinking about moving to Germany. Yeah. It's always up to you whether you want to, like how much you want to integrate. And obviously, it's always um, a difference in the feeling as well, yeah. if you know the language. And yes. um, obviously, but A1 level, I mean, that's already very great because it shows future employers or everybody in your community that you're putting in an effort and that you're actually at least trying and everything else can come yes. later. Yes. But it's a great advice, I think, that you said that you didn't feel 
that your German was enough in the beginning, even though yeah. you did a, an A1 class course. Yeah. And that's um, actually some advice that I often give to foreigners who are coming here as well and look, are wanting to look for jobs. And, and we'll get into the job, uh, the, the information about the jobs later. But I always say, uh, if you don't have to have perfect German when you're going into that that interview, but you have to show somehow that you're trying. So in my first interview, it was a case that I could start off in German. And then when things got complicated, we had to switch to English. But they could see, okay, he is learning and he will. he, he says he does want to learn as well. So then... It just it's a very good demonstration that you want to you want to do that's it. true wonderful great advice yeah perfect so and um now that you're living in germany have you moved while you've been here in germany or are you staying at the same city no we've moved around so much since we've been i think we've moved five times since arriving in germany wow. so when we first arrived my wife's job uh, is in a town a city called schweinfurt which is in mm -hmm. um unterfranken uh, uh, uh lower franconia and it, there's a lot of engineering companies in schweinfurt so that's why we landed up there but it's a very small industrial type of uh, city and then we move we move from there to würzburg and that is when i found my job but my job was in frankfurt so we moved oh. from schweinfurt to würzburg and i was commuting two and a half hours one way each day so it was, it was ending up like five to six hours commute to get to and from my job but again würzburg is it's i think a hundred thousand people but mm -hmm. There, there wasn't a lot of English opportunities. And at that time I needed to work in English because I couldn't do it in, in German. So then we moved to Würzburg and then eventually we've moved now to Middle Franconia, which is nearish Nuremberg, about 50 kilometers from Nuremberg. And I, uh, yeah, we're living out in the country. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. And, and is that the place, um, like of all the places where you've lived now, is it the perfect place for you? Do you like it there or are you thinking already about moving somewhere else again? <laughs> no, we, we when we made this move, we wanted to make a move and say this is it, this is it now because we decided Germany as our home. We're going to stay here for for, ever, for you know for the long yeah. term. And uh, yeah, we, we we said this is the this is the move that we want to make and then just stay here. And the reason we uh, are in the country is because we were looking at buying a house, which is very difficult to do in Germany and it's very, very expensive. So we had to look away from the cities um, okay. far away. So you asked if it's perfect. I don't think anywhere is ever yeah. perfect. Uh, there are a lot of downsides that come with living in a small village in Germany, especially when it comes to the language. It's a, a, a very thick dialect here. Um, but at the same time, the people are all lovely and we're close enough to cities for me to get back to and from my job. And so it's worked out pretty well. So I would say we're mostly happy where we are. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay. Well, that's, I think that's the, the best part. I mean, you need to feel home and you have yeah. your family around. And um, as long as you can tick most of the boxes <laughs> and you're very exactly. close to perfect, then it's fine. And I always uh, say as well that this can change, right? I mean, if there is a different opportunity at some point, I know that people don't want to move that often. And at some point, I mean, you've moved so often. <laughs> at some point, you just want to settle. And then it's great for you that you know, okay, Germany is our home now. And this is where we want to be. And then wherever in Germany, that's just great. I mean, it's a it's a wonderful that you are that you guys are here. So now that you've talked about um, your wife's job and your job. So from what I heard now, that basically means you came to Germany because your wife started the job here. Yes. And did she change internally uh, with her company or how did she find her job? Yeah, kind of. She she found a job. So it was her, the company that she was working with in South Africa. And mm -hmm. they have, uh, it's an international company. It's not a South African company. It's a yeah. Swedish company, actually. And they had offices here and they were also looking she's a mechanical engineer so they were looking oh. for a me mechanical engineers here in germany so she applied and she got the position and what she had to do it was it was kind of an internal move but the way that the paperwork worked um because germany and bureaucracy and everything <laughs> we, she had to actually quit her job at the same company in okay. south africa and then get a new contract and everything over here so it was more or less an internal move but um, it, it, you know, she had to uh, yeah. completely but, transfer over to Germany. Yes, right. But it basically means she didn't have to go online and search for no. a job and apply no. for, like that. It's no. just the bureaucratic way was a little bit difficult. Yeah, it was. Uh, 
love that. <laughs> yeah. But it was also that not, not that difficult. I think if, if people can make a move like that through their current company, it's, it's kind of the, one of the best ways you can do yeah. it because generally what they do as well, we didn't have to worry about visas for yeah. her or for me. They took care of my visa as well because I came on a, God, what is it called? Aufenthalts Erlaubnis or something. Yeah. Right. So, but this this was like 13 years ago. So I don't know if things are still the same. But back then, I I, I just got a, a visa that was attached to my wife's job. Yeah. So as long as she had the job, she had her Aufenthaltserlaubnis. And as long as um, obviously we were married and she still had that job, then I was allowed to stay in Germany. But that didn't allow me to work. So okay. I, I still had a lot of work to do finding a job and then having, <laughs> you know, it's a difficult situation because you want to convince employers that they have to hire you, but you also have to tell them there's a lot of paperwork that's going to come along with me because I, I need you to help me get this visa. So it, it's, it was a very tricky, uh, tricky time. Yeah. Okay. And um, how did you then actually find your job? Yeah. So I, um, I did a lot of, a lot of searching. It was a lot of searching online, a lot of phone calls, a lot of uh, people helping me out at the time through, through my wife's work. Okay. And yeah, I just, it was a very frustrating time. We arrived in March, um, oh. actually pretty, pretty close to our anniversary. Now that I think about it, 14 years, almost oh, wow. <laughs> we arrived on the 24th of March, I think it was, um, in 2007 and my wife, uh, yeah, uh, it was a case of me then looking and it took me, I think I got my job offer in July. So it, it, it wasn't that long. I know of people who've had longer battles to get jobs, but it was also at that time, extremely long because I was, I came with full of, full of optimism and confidence. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to get a job. No problem. And yeah. then you just, it, the, the thing that's frustrating about it is you just send out these applications and you never hear anything back. Oh, no one, yeah. you don't even get rejections. You, you just don't hear anything. So you don't know, did they get it? What didn't they like about it? Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a very, so the frustration and the, 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 the um, anxiety started building up in me because yeah. I started thinking, I'm, I'm not actually going to find a job. Oh. So it, it can be, I, I fully understand when foreigners go through that, especially if it, if it goes longer than uh, like the four months or five months that it took me, I can understand mm -hmm. that it, it can be a very stressful uh, process. Right. Yeah. yeah, and it's and um, I can assure you that it's not just a very stressful uh, process for expats coming to Germany, but actually for anybody that yeah. is applying in Germany. So with me having worked in HR, I know how we processed these applications. And sometimes there were times when we only sent a rejection one and a half years later. And I said, why are we sending one and a half years later the rejection? Don't even bother. The, the candidate know. is not there anymore. They've moved on. <laughs> They've moved on, exactly. So, and it's just like the HR department doesn't put any priority on sending re yeah. rejections. It's yeah. just for them to like basically engage with the candidates that they are actually yeah. interested in. Yeah. But that's it, it. Basically, I totally understand the feeling that at some point you are worried and just um, yeah. It, it, the anxiety is building that you don't yeah. find a job yeah. but it's not nothing personal it has nothing to do with you and that's what i always try to say to everybody that is applying yeah. for a job in germany it has nothing to do with your personality it's just basically sometimes you don't know what happens behind the doors of Absolutely. the department especially as a new foreign eye now i understand because i've worked longer in germany and i've seen some of the the background processes and now i understand but at the time you know you're already your confidence takes a hit when you move to a country like Germany because you're already struggling to make friends. You're struggling yeah. with the language and now you're struggling to find a job. So your confidence, you do go into a sort of mindset where you think it is me. It's my skills. I'm never going to cut it here. And, and mm. the only thing I can say to people is, yes, it feels like that, but just have patience because something could happen at some point. Yes, that's brilliant. Great advice. Thank you, Sean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So and um, when you found or when you were invited for the first time for a job interview, how did that actually go? Was that in German? Was it partly in German? How did it go? Yeah, so first of all, I, I can tell you, I celebrated. And I, I'll tell you the story behind that first job as well. I, I nearly didn't apply for it because it came from, I think it was a suggestion from my wife's boss at the time. He came across the job spec and he sent it to us. And at that time, I was making a career change. I wanted to use my move to Germany to make a career change as well. Before I was in sort of IT consulting and I wanted to move more into uh, 
some technical documentation where you write manuals for software. And, uh, and that's, and that, the reason I did that is because I could use my English as well. There were a lot of IT companies and software companies that needed people writing those documentation, that documentation in English. Hmm. And, um, so I got the job spec from my wife's boss and it said there were two things. It, I, I left it so long that it passed the apply by date, <laughs> first of all. And second of all, one of the bullet points was fluent English and German required. And I took that as writing it off immediately. I was like, well, my, my German is not even close to being fluent. I'm A1 level, there's just no way. Mm. And then one day my wife came past the desk and it was sitting there uh, amongst all the other uh, job specs that I had. And she said, have you applied for this one? And, and I said, no, I haven't. And she said, just apply. And I was busy applying for another job at the time. And then I just thought, you know what? I'll just adapt the cover letter and just send it. Why not? And <laughs> could you believe it? The next day, it wasn't even, I didn't even think it took that long. It was the next day I got a call from them. And I, I, I must tell you, I nearly, I, I was running around the living room after that phone call because I was like, my first job interview. But then of course, the, the pressure is on you yeah. to not screw it up. And, yeah, true. and it's, it's because you think this is the only opportunity I might ever get in Germany. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, so there's a lot of pressure on, on you when, when that happens. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, I went, the job was in Frankfurt. Mm -hmm. So I had to go from Würzburg at the, where we were living at the time to, to Frankfurt. And so I had a lot of time in the train in the ICE to look over my notes and to think mm -hmm. about it. But what happened was on the way uh, there, while I was looking at my notes on the train, I happened to look down and I was wearing a suit uh, with a tie mm -hmm. and my, I realized my trousers were ripped at the crotch. No! <laughs> so, uh, I mean, this is me going for my big interview in Frankfurt and I was like, Oh my God. So I absolutely panicked, but I thought, you know what? And I thought it crossed my mind. Maybe I should just go home and not do this because I was already feeling so stressed about everything. But then I thought, no, you know what? I'll make it work somehow. If, if someone notices, I will just have to say something. Yeah. And I went to the job interview and uh, yeah, they, they sat, sat me there and it was one of these glass tables. It wasn't even a proper. Oh, no. <laughs> so I, had to, I had to just cross my legs the whole way through. They must've thought that I was like some kind of, I don't know, uh, some kind of uh, methodology that I'm using. Yes, <laughs> to right, yeah. Meanwhile, I just want to see the, them to see my underwear. <laughs> hilarious oh but, my god yeah, I mean, but nobody you know, noticed yeah okay nobody noticed that's great oh wonderful yeah. but i mean you're already very nervous you're stressed <laughs> and something yeah. like that happens and yeah. you're always thinking about hopefully they don't see my underwear <laughs> but but actually exactly and it's on your mind the whole time yeah. but actually what happened was it, it helped my mindset in some way okay. because i just thought you know what screw it because yeah. so much has gone wrong now like i've waited so long for this opportunity of course now my trousers get ripped <laughs> So, you know what, I, and by then I'm thinking I'm having a bad day and I just, I just went in with a thing like, let's just do this. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. And that mindset was actually, I think, very good for me. Yeah. And you mm -hmm. asked about the German. So yeah. it, as I said earlier, I went in and I started off in German and explained, I am currently learning German. And I was open and honest from, from the, from the get go in my cover letter as well. I said, I am not fluent in German, mm -hmm. um, but I'm working on it and I want to be fluent and I will be fluent someday. And then, so we started off in German and then when things got too difficult, they actually offered switch to, you, you can say when you want to switch to English. And when things got tough, mm -hmm. I would sometimes answer their German questions in English. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, so they could see that I had a level of understanding, but we also had a lot of times where I just didn't understand what the questions were and then they would do it in English. And then eventually the interview just kind of switched all, all the way to English. Yeah. Yeah, so, but wonderful. I mean, yeah. even at level A1, and that's how you how you manage that. That's really cool. But I think the mindset have really helped you. Oh, screw this. Let's yeah. see what happens. Okay. <laughs> so, but I mean, you uh, and then you then you got the job. So uh, when did you actually find out that you got the job? Yeah, well, I walked walked out there and thought there's no way I got that job because mm -hmm. uh, because of everything. But I was just relieved to be out and no one no one noticed that, that that my trousers were ripped and everything was fine. And then I think it took two days to get a phone call from them and they invited me back for a second interview. Mm -hmm. And then, so the first interview was with the hiring manager and HR, and then the second interview was with sort of the uh, two managers up or something like that, up or higher up in the hierarchy. And I think also with the HR, that one was. And in that second interview, they, ma they made me an offer. 
Uh, okay so during the second interview already okay yeah. but i mean that's a great sign always there are sometimes uh, several levels that we have to go through but um when you are invited with the people that actually make the decisions it's wonderful that they give you the offer okay yeah. Yeah. and then you basically had a career change in a new country new language <laughs> yeah. and how did that go <laughs> It was a lot of fun. Um, of, of course, at first, it's a lot of figuring out the culture, because even though it was a Swedish company, um, they, it was very German in the German offices in, in yeah. Frankfurt. So it, it was just it was a case of getting to know German culture. And I think there were that's where I had a lot of my culture shocks. Getting to Germany was fine. But when I started working was where I struggled, because I think the biggest thing for me was the directness of Germans, which is okay. something as a South African, I was not used to in the workplace, we would have, I mean, some people can be direct, of course, I'm speaking in generalizations here, but, but to go into a German workplace, there's a few things that's surprising at first, like Germans tell you exactly what they what's on their mind. It's actually it's a stereotype, but it's not a stereotype, because it's kind of true. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you get a very clear indication. So in South Africa, we would often sugarcoat things when we explain yeah. something to them. And we put it in very polite language. And Germans don't have time for that, which is something I appreciate now but back then it's very difficult in a work environment and mm. and there's things like um yeah it's just it's it's a big jump to to understand what they're thinking and you sometimes think they they think i'm they think i'm uh i'm not doing a good job mm -hmm. but all they're doing is communicating to you directly yeah and uh but 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 you're obviously with your cultural with my cultural background i was interpreting it as they think i'm doing a terrible job so i spend most of my probation period going there's no I'm getting past my probation period uh, and of course it all went well and uh, I stayed at that company for nine years wow uh, that's a very good, long time yeah it was a good it was okay. a great job for me yeah. yeah yeah so I I guess it was also a great start in order to really get to use yeah. or get used to the culture and so on and yeah. how working in Germany is and the thing that you are saying I've heard that so often that mm -hmm. we Germans that we don't even know that the directness that we're using in our communication can be um yeah just can put you off at some yeah. point and yeah. that's um something that we germans probably have to learn <laughs> when working in an international environment yeah. um yeah mm, okay so and that was your very first job but and that was kind of like technical writing yes. yeah yes and then so and what are you doing now so now I'm a content marketer, which is actually closer to what I always wanted to be mm -hmm. uh, with, like through through most of my, my uh, early working days. I wanted mm -hmm. to get into uh, more writing, more creative stuff. And so I made the leap in 2018 to change mm -hmm. my career. And by then I'd been in Germany for 11 years. Mm -hmm. Wait, I don't know what the math is. I, my math is yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's 11 years actually. Yeah. And um, so my German was good enough, I, but I'm still working in English. I'm uh, working for a smaller startup company, mm -hmm. startup kind of company. I don't think that they're actually a startup by definition, but yeah. uh, we produce blogs, videos, yeah. uh, all kinds of content in English. And I'm involved with that. And it's, it's it was a great career move to make. Yeah. Um, but it, but uh, the great thing about that career move was, again, it was this mindset of, you know what, I've really wanted to do this. This job came up and it kind of fit my profile, like exactly how I needed to. There was some things that didn't fit. And I just thought, you know what, I'm going to try for it and I've got nothing to lose. And I just went in and, uh, and I, and, and again, this attitude of yeah. it, not, I, I don't want to say not caring because you should care. Like the, yeah. you have to, you have to care. And obviously I did care, but yeah. you've also got nothing to lose. So you say, yeah. well, um, then that's the way it is if, if I don't yeah. get the job and that changes the way you approach it. And, and, um, and I was also very honest. I said, I can't, I've never done marketing before. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it was just one of these things that, um, the, the mindset helped me, I think, convince them. That's to, brilliant. To take me and on. how did you find that job? Did you find it online or through your network? I found it found it online uh, through LinkedIn, and uh, oh. so I've had two jobs since my first job in Germany, and both of them I, I found on LinkedIn. Okay, well that's a great advice as well. And yeah. many people search jobs through LinkedIn. I think that's a great network to go through and a job platform where you can actually find jobs. It is, but interestingly enough, I don't usually apply through LinkedIn. So I yeah. often find link find jobs because LinkedIn is very good at popping up once you've looked at a few job specs. 
Uh, it starts sending you similar job specs yes, uh, right. that you might not have seen. And then, then you, so you're sitting and your phone pops up a notification and says, this company needs a uh, content marketing. You're like, oh, let's, let's look oh, at that. Yeah. And then you, you, you're more likely to find some, or at least I think I'm, I'm more likely to find something because it pops up in my face. Um, but then what I do is I go and re research the, the company yeah. on their websites and okay. I, I apply directly. I sometimes say that I found you on LinkedIn, but I apply yeah. directly on, on their website yeah. for the jobs. I think it's just easier to get directly to the company. Yes. And it's also a great way of you doing that because actually it, it shows that you are investigating the company a bit yeah. more, that you're like interested in and you're looking at what is the company actually doing to oh, us. Yes to their vision, mission or whatever they are doing. So yeah. that's a great way of applying. <laughs> yeah. I actually have, um, I know that people find job ads through LinkedIn or that LinkedIn jobs find them, but mm -hmm. I've never heard of anybody who actually applied through LinkedIn. Yeah. So um, th that's great that you just write your own. Okay. Yeah. And, so and just, to, just to say something about, about that as well is also um, uh, what, what I think, the difference for me with that with this job is as well um was that i i knew well, uh, i've kind of lost my train of thought now but i was going to say oh um that it that i was looking at the company you were talking about researching companies mm -hmm. because i wasn't desperate for that job i yeah. also went into the interview saying i want to see if this company is good for me like if, if this is a good fit for me and that is also a big mindset that i think and i get that new foreigners who are just like want to get in the door can't yeah. necessarily have that mindset, but I think it's very good if you try and say, but is this a good fit for me? Because yes. that's a big point. Yeah, that's a very big point. That's great of you to say that because actually, normally we come from a mindset, I really need this job or I really want this job. I really want to work in Germany and yeah. just any job will do. And um, But just taking a step back and really analyzing does this company fit to me is a very valuable advice because I always also say um, use all of the time that you get. So during the job interview, how are they treating you then? And yeah. during the probationary period, right. how are they treating you during that period? Yeah. Because that's how you get a feeling for the company and whether you actually fit together. Exactly. And if you don't feel comfortable then, still keep going and keep applying yeah, yeah. so exactly. okay so um now i'm very glad that you've changed your career path as well and that you've adjusted to the way that you actually always wanted to work or that you've imagined is there any any area that you are very curious about currently that you are like what are you researching the most for your development for yourself yeah uh most at mostly at the moment um, because it's got to do with things that I do in my private life and at work is I'm doing a lot of research about video and audio production. So uh -huh. um, because at work, I, I present YouTube videos and I also uh, obviously, like I said, I write blogs, but in my spare time, we, we mentioned at the top, I, I have a podcast and I'm branching that podcast out into YouTube. So it, it, this stuff is relevant, like social media and uh, video and audio production is relevant for me right now in all spheres of my life. So that's something that I spend a lot of time listening to podcasts about or watching tutorials on, or just reading books about how, you know, how to do this stuff. So that's, that's, that's my big curiosity, I would say at the moment. That's great. That's great. And then, I mean, this is very helpful for your job. And I mean, your employers they, or, or your managers, they see, okay, he's really into this stuff. So you are investing your time whenever you can into yeah. this topic and it's valuable for your private life and your work life. Yeah. So that's win, a win-win win situation. Win-win. I love those. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. Okay. So, and then um, now you've mentioned your podcast and um, obviously this is something that how people can find you. And, but one question that I have, why did you start this podcast? Um, it, many different reasons. I, I've always wanted to be in radio. That was something that I wanted to do as a kid. Um, I always used to pretend I was a radio DJ and uh, it just never happened. I ended up, as I said, in IT consulting and, you know, my life just went in a different direction, but now with podcasts, it's, it's relatively easy to get into. And I thought I could be good at it. So I started the podcast. So that was the one reason. The other reason is I've been in Germany for such a long time, but I'm still fascinated in 
uh, how new foreigners feel when they arrive. Or, yeah. And by new, I mean the first five years or so while you're figuring, figuring things out, learning the language and stuff. Because I can't remember everything. So when I speak to foreigners who are new and they tell me something, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that was a huge <laughs> stress in my life. Yeah. Now it is not even a, a second thought. But, but you know, and it's, it kind of makes me nostalgic and makes me, it gives me a bit of perspective on my own journey when I speak to uh, foreigners. So I enjoyed doing that so much. I thought, why don't I start a podcast and talk to foreigners in Germany about their experiences here? Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And I didn't think it would, you know, I kind of thought there would be a few discussions, but actually everyone's got such a unique story. There's some things that are the same within the framework, but some people react differently. People are coming from different cultures that I'm still doing it 70 plus episodes later. So, and it's, and like I said, it's given me such a perspective on my own journey as a foreigner here in Germany. So yeah. that's why I started and that's why I keep doing it. Yeah, and it sounds so great. I mean, I mean, you've come a long way and there are so many years that you've spent in Germany already. And it's great to see that you then realize, oh yeah, that was something that I worried yeah. about back then. Yeah. It's, it's something that I often say to foreigners as well, like the things you feel now are stressing you out and, and, and maybe even causing you to cry at night or frustrations. These things, if you just stick through it and find, find strategies to get through these things, listen to other people who have experience with these things, I promise you in three years time, this will not be an issue in your life. You know, yeah. th th it's just something that, that, that is really huge right now, but it's, it's a temporary obstacle and nothing is permanent. So you just keep moving through these things. Wow. What a wise saying. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. So, and then how uh, can people actually find you? Where can they listen to you and what do you offer them basically? You yeah, so the podcast, as we mentioned, it's a podcast about life in Germany, but through the eyes of outsiders. I also have interviews with Germans, and uh, someone on this call is going to be a guest on the show pretty soon. Um, Lisa, I've invited Lisa to come on and talk, uh, talk about some stuff on a future episode. Um, so we have Germans giving advice, but we also have the stories of foreigners, and you can find it at thegermanyexperience.de. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. Well, I hope that everybody um, has gotten some value out of our wonderful live session here. So there were a lot of um, benefits I see that you've talked about and many um, wonderful hints and tricks that people can actually use um, if they want to come to Germany. And I can recommend uh, Sean's podcast so uh -huh. just go through his episodes and pick whatever you whatever information is very interesting to you right now or anything that keeps you awake at night uh, because Sean has interviewed many people and there are so many experiences that you can just work with and that's very very helpful. Sean thank you very much for being a part of my lives here with thank the Lisa Job Coach Germany. It was a pleasure and I can't wait to be on your podcast. I can't wait either. I'm very excited and thank you so much for inviting me to this live q and I really appreciate it. Yeah I appreciate your time and your effort here so thank you very much and bye bye Sean. Bye bye.